This shiny satin dress is made of silk. This rich embroidered waistcoat is also made of silk. This sheer sari is made of silk too. So is this finely pleated gown and this embroidered kimono. Silk is a fascinating material with many different looks and textures. As a fiber, silk is remarkably strong yet lightweight. As a fabric, silk can be glossy or quite matte. It can stay warm in cold weather, but feel cool in hot weather. But silk isn't just used in fashion. Some people have furnished their rooms with painted silk wallpaper and silk covered furniture. Silk has also been used to make objects of worship. Different faiths have created magnificent silk embroideries to decorate holy buildings. In the fields of science and technology, silk can be found in fishing lines, mountaineering ropes and parachutes. Some of these items have a second life in fashion. Some of the things made in silk can be really unexpected and surprising, like these playing cards, this playbill, or this newspaper. Silk's special properties have been appreciated since ancient times, and the desire for silk has spun connections between Asia, Europe, the Americas, Australia, and Africa for hundreds, and in some cases, thousands of years. To understand what makes silk so special, we need to take a closer look. This is a single fibre of filament of silk. It's very fine and can be as long as 1,200 metres. Silk is an animal fibre that comes from different species of moths and spiders. But the best known, and most common, comes from the Bombyx mori moth. To understand why, we need to take an even closer look. Even closer, at microscopic level. We can see that the silk filament from the Bombyx mori moth has a triangular profile. This shape reflects more light and appears shinier than, for example, the filament from wild silk, which is a spiral or flat profile. This attractive shine is one of the reasons why the Bombyx mori has always been the most popular moth for sericulture. Farmers have cared for the Bombyx mori moth for thousands of years, and the process today remains similar to how it was in ancient times. It starts with the mulberry leaf. This is the favourite food of the Bombyx mori larvae. When the larvae is ready, it enters its chrysalis state. It oozes a gummed filament and winds around itself, so that eventually it will break through the cocoon and break free as a moth. Traditionally, to get the longest and strongest fibres, most farmers stop the moth from munching through the silk by suffocating it or boiling it inside the cocoon. Some farmers decide to let the moth eat through the cocoon unharmed, even though they would harvest shorter and more broken fibres. This type of silk is now known as peace silk. The cocoons are then washed of the gum, dried, sorted and reeled and spun into threads. This highly specialised production has been firmly in place since at least the 3rd century BC. Sericulture began in China, which is the native habitat of the Bombyx mori moth, and it spread to Korea, Thailand, Japan and India by 300 AD. Later, sericulture spread to the Middle East and Europe. Alongside sericulture was the production of silk fabrics. This entire process of farming, manufacturing and trade tied together countries around the world through the exchange of objects, ideas, fashions and techniques. Here are a few of them. Silk has been used for decorative effects since at least 1000 BC, when silk thread began to be used in the embroidery of fabrics. Silk threads wrapped in metals like gold and silver were used to create fashionable or symbolic pieces. England saw a flourishing of amateur embroidery in the late 1600s. It decorated household items like these caskets. Some people practiced their embroidery on a flat cloth, creating what is known as a sampler. This one is from Mexico, and its silk threads still hold its vivid colour, even though it was made close to 200 years ago. Silk weaves range from the very simple to the highly complex. 
Just a few small changes to silk threads can result in an enormous variety of styles, patterns and effects. Closely packed threads make the fabric opaque, while threads spaced wide apart create more transparency. Different coloured threads can create effects ranging from highly contrasting patterns to subtle illusions of depths. For centuries, knotted threads have been used to create a range of textiles and trimmings. In China, knotted silk fringes embellish women's festive robes and dance costumes. In traditional Korean costumes, women often tied an ornamental pendant with a knotted and braided silk cord called a norige to the sash of their jacket or skirt. Rich, knotted fringes decorated elaborate saddle cloths for horses and other animals, like this one from India. In Europe, knotting became a popular crafting technique known as macrame. It was used to create high-end luxury clothes. Crocheting with silk was a popular craft technique for making bags and purses. Another technique used around the world was knitting. These hand-knitted silk socks from Kurdistan feature a pattern sole, as it was customary to take your shoes off indoors. Today, machines can produce knits and braids, but techniques like crochet and macrame can still only be done by hand. A wide range of finishing techniques can be applied to enhance a silk cloth's appearance, such as stamping a decorative motif, making patterns with slashing and punching, creating a rippled surface, also known as a watered or moiré silk, and or adding texture using pleating and smocking. Today's silk accounts for 0.2% of fibre production worldwide. But even though there are more synthetic fibres than ever, the appreciation and the desire for silk continues. Heritage organisations still use silk to refurbish grand historical apartments. Many fashion designers are looking to use silk in more sustainable ways. Science and industry are also finding new uses for silk. It can adapt to freezing temperatures of outer space. Perhaps silk threads will become part of intergalactic travel. Even after thousands of years, we're still unraveling silk's properties. And we're still finding new ways to use it.